guys, I want to talk with you today about a couple of resources to help your groups, your community groups, your discipleship groups stay in contact and continue to learn and grow and study together. Um, I know these things will probably be new to most of you, but I want to really strongly encourage you to make use of them because we don't know honestly how long this separation is going to last and we don't want our groups to fall by the wayside in the midst of all this. So uh, I've got a couple of resources. Again, I'm going to explain to you uh, what they are and how they work. If you are a part of a group, I encourage you to watch this video in its entirety so you'll know what we're talking about. Pass this video uh, link on to others who are in your groups who maybe haven't seen it. And let's make sure that our groups continue to stay together. So uh, let's check these things out. These two resources are called Slack and Zoom. And so I'm going to let you guys see on your screen. I'm going to show you how they work. I'm going to walk you through them, what they do, how you use them. Um, and again, I know it's going to be new to most of you, but once you get in and you get it set up and you get it going, it's pretty simple. So let's check these two things out, see how we can use them to keep our groups going. Take a look at is Slack. This is what it looks like on your desktop. Now Slack can be used on a computer desktop or as an app on your phone, either way. So uh, I have both. I have it on my desktop and on my phone so I can use it whenever and wherever I need to. Uh, so the first thing that will happen with Slack is I will send you an email. You'll get an email from me inviting you to join one of these groups you see over here on the sides. Uh, these are private, meaning if you're a member of the Sharp group uh, and not a member of the Long group, you can't see into the Long group and their discussion. So if you have prayer requests or things that need to be discussed among your group that maybe you don't want to be public outside of that group, uh, it's private, so you can only see those things if you are invited to be a member of that group. So you'll get that email, uh, and here are a couple of screenshots of what it looks like to walk through on your phone. So when you get that email uh, and you open up, if you get it, again, through your phone, it's probably going to ask you to download the app. Go ahead and do that. Uh, it's not a very big app. It's not a huge deal. Um, it just makes it easier. So go ahead and get that app, and then... Uh, once you go back through the email that I send you, it will ask you uh, to first put in your full name. Uh, I just put my first name because you know everybody in your group knows who you are. And then it'll ask you to make up a password for yourself, whatever you want that to be. That's just how you're going to log back into Slack in the future if you ever log out. And then you'll hit that create account button uh, and it'll take you to the, this is called the workspace where you can uh, start to get to work. And so then up in the upper left-hand corner, you can type that SG for uh, Stone Ridge Baptist Church Groups. And that's where you can begin to see these channels and places where you can talk with people in your community groups. So once you're in, uh, it'll start to look like this over here that you can see where there's the name of your group. You'll be able to see here uh, as people join and Slack, really, this is what we're going to use this for. This is for messaging, and it's for file sharing. All right. And so what you'll see here is once you sign up and you make your profile, uh, you can come right here and you can talk to each other. Uh, I can say, hi, guys, to my group. Hit enter, and that'll pop up. So you'll be able to see who said what. Uh, you, can, you can use this uh, symbol here to speak directly to people. Um, but all of this will remain. It's searchable. You can go back later and see what was said about different things. Uh, so this is where you guys can talk back and forth within your groups. Uh, and then the other resource here that we'll be using is this little paper clip on the side. This is where you can attach files. So you can click here uh, and I can upload files to you guys straight to your groups from my computer. So I can send you a little message. Uh, this is our current SRBC, no, that's not right, Stone Ridge Students series. And I can choose who it's going to, click upload, that'll process right there, and eventually it'll pop up here down at the bottom. So you can see that there. So I can send files to you guys. I can send you some discipleship material or some community group material for you to see. And once a file has been uploaded, 
you can click this button right up here, come down here to shared files, uh, and that stuff will, it says there's none here now, it should be. Let's try that one more time. There it is. Uh, so those files will remain over here. So you can download them or you can come back and look at them later if you can't see them in the message anymore, if it moves too far. Uh, those files will remain. So this is where I can push content to you guys as we're trying to remain in our groups, continue studying together. This is where you can talk together and I can talk to you because I'm a member of each of these groups here. Uh, we can all stay in communication. So make sure to get on there. Uh, again, it's super easy once you get your profile set up to navigate around. Uh, you can come over here to direct messages and you can talk straight to people that other uh, people in the groups cannot see if you need to. Um, but very easy way to communicate and then for me to share files with your whole group instead of having to text every one of you or email every one of you, whatever I need to get to you. Our second resource is called Zoom, and this is the way I would recommend that you guys try to meet while we're separated. And so the way Zoom works, uh, you can go to uh, zoom.com or zoom.us in your browser and you'll set up an account. And all you need is an email address to set up your account. Not a big deal. Uh, and then once you've done that, if you are the group leader, if you're going to host the meeting, you just go here to new meeting. If you're not the host and you're going to join, you come over here to join. Uh, if you're in your web browser, it's up here in the top corner. Uh, and if you're on your phone, you can also do that there. You can join uh, your meetings, get the Zoom app, and join in there. So if I'm hosting, I'll come here and click on New Meeting. Hey, there's me. Uh, I'll join with Computer Audio. Now, this is important. You need to make sure that if you're using Zoom on your computer, that your computer has a working microphone and camera so that people in the group can see and hear you. Otherwise, if your computer doesn't, I recommend that you use your phone and use the microphone and the camera on your phone. And again, you can just get the Zoom app and do this same thing. So I'm going to join with computer audio so everybody can see and hear. And then I'm going to come here to invite. We're going to use that to cover my face up because um, we don't need that. So if I'm the host, I'll come and click here on invite down here at the bottom. And then you see there's an invite code right here. And there's a meeting password here. And so host or leaders, you'll need to pass both of those things to your group members. Uh, when I meet with students, I just text it to them. Uh, you can use Slack to pass that code along to your whole group at once. And then uh, here are some shots that I'm going to put up on your video of what it looks like if you're joining on your phone, where you put in the invitation code, you put in the password, and then you're in. And then host uh, and everybody, what you'll see is that this space here begins to fill up with little pictures of the people that you're meeting with, little videos. And so you can see each other, you can talk to each other. I used it this Sunday with the students. It was great. Um, we didn't have any problems. Everybody seemed to enjoy being able to connect in that way. And then when you're done, you just come down here to end meeting, end meeting for all, and everything is closed. So that's an easy way for you guys to meet after I push the discipleship content to you. You have a chance to read the verses, to study it, to look at the questions that go with it. Then you guys can gather together on Zoom and you can uh, continue to discuss. You can have a little meeting there. Please keep in mind that if you're using the free version of Zoom, you are limited to 40-minute meetings. And after that, it will cut you off. So try to keep your meetings underneath 40 minutes once you get started. So those are the two resources that uh, I have suggested for you guys to use in your groups, Slack and Zoom. Again, I really strongly encourage you to make use of them. Go back through this video again. Uh, if you need some extra help on getting set up, please contact me, text me, call me, uh, drop by the office if you feel safe doing that right now. Uh, and I'll be happy to get you guys set up using Slack and using Zoom. But again, what we don't want to happen is our groups fall by the wayside and, and uh, we neglect one another in this time. So make use of these things. Leaders, encourage your group members to participate. Uh, again, please reach out if you have questions. Uh, and hopefully this will bring us just one step closer as we continue to come together in this time.